everybody thank you for joining me again thank you for joining me this very cold morning here and uh out here on the west coast uh we're gonna do another quick i think this is part two on our sherman tank restoration it's not a rebuild it's not a build it's a restoration of an actual model sherman tank the one that has a 105 howitzer this is actual dragon model that dragon used for the photographs uh, on their box on the kit not the actual artwork in front but the photographs around the side and in the back and uh, we purchased it from a local hobby store out here in southern california that would be brookhurst hobbies and they acquired it from dragon at a big giant uh model convention here about four years ago i want to say uh it was like a big thing went on for like four or five days and uh, dragon brought a bunch of their stuff out and uh Brookhurst Hobbies acquired it, and uh, I was lucky enough to have one of the owners pass along some of the stuff over to me. Uh, some of the stuff was in great condition. This particular girl here was the one that was worse off. She was pretty banged up and not put together too well to begin with by the folks over at Dragon. Anyways, uh, thank you for joining me. Real quick, let me please, please say hi to a new subscriber, Daniel Bellinger. Daniel Bellinger, thank you. Welcome aboard. Uh, feel free, make yourself at home, feel free to comment, give advice, uh, critiques, criticisms, uh, tips, whatever you want. It's all good. Uh, thank you, Daniel Ballinger. Uh, also, Dale, D. Dale 612 or D. Dale 612. I mentioned those channels. Um, Panzermeister, Adam Man, Cohen Scale Model, if he's still building. Uh, he gets pissed off at YouTube every once in a while and he pulls his channel off and then he'll come back later. But he's a big, giant, gentle sweetheart of a man with excellent modeling skills. And his uh, video series builds are long, but they're very entertaining. Uh, another one I didn't get to add, but I'm going to add today. This one's very, very important, especially for something we're going to cover here today briefly, is Night Shift. YouTube's channel, Night Shift. Uh, I love his channel. He covers armor. He really, really has gotten into the texturing, Zimmerit, um and weathering here recently extremely gifted extremely talented talented and puts out some beautiful models here on youtube and i absolutely love his uh his little weird accent he's got there kind of reminds me of a, a yakov smirnov's accent if you guys remember that from back in the 80s what we're gonna do here today what we started to do here last night is we um before I started to, to get all the little pieces that our turret is going to need and the little pieces that would be uh, appropriate for this particular variant of the Sherman tank um, what you're going to wind up doing is you're going to if you want I love to buy beat up destroyed models of anything uh, with the idea of rescuing it and putting them back together and it's something i've been very very successful at and i've actually made a very good living doing that uh over the past couple decades if not longer actually longer but if you're going to get into that if you kind of like this and it's just a very this slow as molasses way of modeling you definitely want to try and go on ebay or your local swap meets yard sales your uh modeling clubs fellow members and acquire the actual uh directions for your particular model you're going to be working on and start acquiring your sprues or the sprues you can get as close to the pieces you need for your particular variant and that's what i did here uh on that sprue without wasting too much time uh, these are about half the pieces we're going to put on the turret there's still about half more that are still on the sprue that we'll um, tear into as the series goes on. Um, no sense in putting them on the turret right now because I'm going to explain the following. What our turret was missing besides some of the parts I had busted off or just were never included was on the Sherman tanks. One of the unique features and uh, in the 70s and 80s maybe early 90s a lot of people weren't were missing this step is your sherman tank has that one piece cast turret 
and your hull of the Sherman tank is made out of sheet steel welded together. So your sheet steel is going to be smooth like a sheet of steel. It'll have imperfections and stuff like that, which we'll get into on this guy here though later on. But definitely, there should be no, no smoothness to your turret whatsoever, especially on the sides. The parts that are more visible, because your turret is a one-piece casting. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and say it's a one-piece sand casting. Uh, similar to steam locomotives, where the frame was cast in one big giant piece. So it's rough textured. It's not smooth on the sides. Uh, your steam cylinders, um, your drivers... Um, your trailing truck, your pony truck, stuff like that. Uh, you'll notice it'll never be smooth still like model makers make them or used to make or tend to use to make them. They'll have rough texture to them because they're sand castings. Uh, those of you who dabble in castings will be familiar with that term and know what I'm talking about. So what I did using Mr. Surfacer 500, one of my favorite products, some light on this stuff here is um you make sure we'll do that right here right now let me move the tripod so i can bring my chair around and sit down with you guys i think we'll do it right there all right uh if i see my elementary like explaining the basics that we already know uh, my videos tend I tend to shoot my videos for newcomers, new kids getting into the hobby, uh, people returning back into the hobby after many, 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 many years away from it and are surprised by the explosion of quality that the hobby in all aspects of the hobby have, um, have uh, evolved into. So um, this spare sprue that I have will explain you can see you can see that rough texture in other words and let's see we can goof around with the lights here see that that's a cast that's how a sand casting should look and as dragon produces more and more newer newer kits they're starting to include the actual texture onto their turrets or other parts like tiger tanks and stuff like that i'm not going to cut this turret off of the sprue and use it on our dragon uh restoration project because i want to keep that as original as possible uh with and omitting obvious glaring mistakes fixing them or improving on them i can use this for another project in the future and it's slightly different turret i'd have to do some mods to it that i just don't want to do to something that's in mint condition at this moment um, we went ahead and added i'm looking through the viewfinder so if i look lost using mr surfacer that smooth as silk finish uh, i went ahead and got rid of it by using mr texture Mr. Surfacer, I'm sorry. Mr. Surfacer by Mr. Hobby. And uh, she's got that rough texture because it's a one-piece sand casting. The back part may have been a separate casting. Uh, I'm not exactly sure on that. I'd have to actually look at the blueprints and shop drawings. But I'm very, very happy the way this came out. And by using Mr. Surfacer 500, that's how we achieve that. And we're going to do that here today real quick. Uh, real quick before we, what we're going to do right now is we're going to put a little bit of uh, Mr. Surfacer on here. But before we do that, let me just, we're, let me go into an explanation how we're going to mount the aluminum 105 millimeter or 105 centimeter, 105 millimeter, um, howitzer main gun on here is we're going to do it through the inside it's going to stick out a lot more inside of our manlet than the original plastic one which is basically glued on we can go ahead and we can go ahead and uh, glue a collar onto this at the correct 
distance where it would stop our turret and hold it in place where we want it to. These were short stubby guns, by the way, big wide caliber short stubby guns. And these were used to blow up. Mainly these were used for uh, concrete emplacements, bunkers, pillboxes, stuff like that, the fortifications. Um, what I'm, uh, I want the barrel and the mantlet to operate and elevate. It barrel weighs more than the plastic one, so the standard press fit friction glued on piece you would put back here from Dragon is not going to work or may not work very, very long after a few days with the weight of the barrel moving around. You'd start to have a droopy barrel. So what we're going to do with this guy here, <laughs> and this is the way I build. We're not going to cut the barrel. I'm going to keep that barrel length. I'm going to use that extra length uh, as a counter weight for it to operate the way I'm gonna do it, is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, thread the rear of the barrel and put a nut on there. Yeah, you heard me correctly, you purist. <laughs> uh, this is the way I build. This is the way I build everything. I overly do it and I throw a lot of metal in there and I make sure it lasts for its lifetime. Um, we'll thread it up to the point where it has to go, where it sticks to the mantlet. We'll put some sort of washer that will fit that profile, that curb profile of the inner magnet. We'll tighten that bolt on there through the, from the backside of this part. And that will allow your barrel to move up and down. Over the years or through expansion and contraction of the weather, weather changes in the seasons, it may start to get loose again. Well, you just go in through the back here, you tighten that nut just slightly a little bit more and you get that, that friction, um, action on it um, yeah i know it's not the way everyone else builds with sherman tanks but it's definitely the way i love to build my sherman tanks actually any model i build real quick also um anyways what i was going to say is there's no sense in gluing all these little bits onto the turret they still have a little bit of texturing and sanding to do uh, so handling it you're only going to knock off these pieces we'll glue on a couple right now but um well, definitely after we're done texturing the turret, we'll add everything on that has to go on. And once we put the gun and the nut through the back, that way we don't have to handle this anymore. We can put it straight back on the model and not have to worry about knocking pieces off. Another thing that bugged me about this where it's going to be an improvement and we're not going to do it the way the Dragon folks put the model together uh, for this quick modeling session they did is the front drive lights, or in this case, we'll call them the headlights. Um, they were all clear styrene all the way around, front and back. It was just like a globe, like a, a vase or a vase, clear crystal sitting in the front there. And obviously we all know that's not the way headlights or driving lights work. The only clear crystal part would be the lens in the front. The back, the housing, and everything else will have be made out of metal or painted or or um, some sort of hard plastic housing. So this is nothing new, I'm sure, to most modelers. But to the new modelers, let me show them this step. I put the headlights, the lens, the clear part down on the sticky tape, press down real good and firmly, and I shot the back with primer. So let's see how that came out. I already know we already did it. As a matter of fact, this is the piece we used. But for video purposes, let's go ahead and do this, and you will see what I'm talking about. See, that's how it was on the tape. And that's how it looks with the clear part. Now we can glue these to the front of that uh, hole in the tank. So real quick, let's go ahead and uh, add some texture, show you guys how I do that or how it's done. There are some great YouTube, man, I mentioned those uh, YouTube sites um, to D-Dale612 and everybody else. Those are just sites that I watched these kids when they were young start their YouTube site channel and uh, now they got their stuff down, they're doing great and uh, I'm loyal to those channels because I've known these guys since they were kids, at least through YouTube. So they're my 
favorite channels. They make me feel all warm and fuzzy. I'm sure, not I'm sure, there are some incredible YouTubers and modders on this YouTube thing. And uh, uh, my advice is find out which one speaks directly to you and you're comfortable with. And, uh, and not just one. Do as many as you can and uh, become prolific before you actually start even building your model through the courtesy and kindness of these uh, of our fellow YouTubers. Shaking the bottle. All right. I love the texturing process in model making because it's the only time in our adult lifetime that we can, in our daily, uh, in our daily goings on, where we can actually use the word stipple, stipple. So. Literally, what you're going to do is you're going to get a hard bristle, preferably a used one, because you might, you're going to wind up wrecking it after a little while. Brush, a stubby one. If you ever wondered what they were for, this is a perfect subject. You get your... Get some light on you. Let's get closer to the light, like right there, and zoom in. All righty. So you dip your, don't get too crazy with it. It's almost kind of like dry, dry brush, dry brush in a model. There we go. So you, as I drop the brush onto the floor, but, um, I'm sitting in a weird position. It's almost like I'm sitting and hugging the tripod. Got my arms around the tripod. I've got one of those overhead things. Maybe one of these days I'll take that out of the closet and work on it. So basically, you're just going to apply or stipple. This stuff is kind of like self-leveling and it dries when you're done you're going to think you're 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 um you've been doing this all your life you get too much put some on your um well i think i clean off the excess on my wrist probably want to do it on a little piece of paper uh you can clean up your brush afterward with lacquer thinner or i find oh you can clean up the mess on your hands i find lacquer thinner is the best I'm sure there's different methods of applying this. This is mine, and I'm real happy with the results. It looks like it's overly done, and it may seem that way. You can go back over those spots that smoothed out again and just keep stippling. But it all it'll all um even out eventually. Dries pretty quick. I want to say within about 20 minutes, it's all dry. I guess depending on your weather conditions, atmospheric conditions, where you guys are at. But you start to get the idea. So we'll let that dry. Remember, there's tons of YouTube channels, tons of techniques for uh, texturing your, your armor. Check them all out. Uh, we're not done with this. We'll just let it dry for now and we'll come back and show you how it looks. Let's move on to the next little topic we're going to be working on the next couple of days. Put this way out of the way so we don't knock it over. So if you're curious, now you don't have to do this. I could have kept the sides smooth as it came originally from this older dragon kit. But um, for it to be correct for a Sherman tank, you definitely want to have a textured. Uh, just like Russian armor is very textured, World War II Russian armor, uh, that type thing. So uh, once we primer the turret in one color, the Tamiya Primer Gray, it'll all blend in together, and uh, it's going to make sense. And when we put it on the body, when we put it on the body, 
and primer it all together it'll make a lot 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 more sense okay um like i said i i i i do have brand new kits the latest stuff upstairs in my shelves right above here my workbench one of these days i'll give you guys a little tour but very rarely do i crack open a brand new kit and start working on it i like to go on ebay swap meets Never been to a yard sale where they have models, but I like to buy beat up piles or badly put together or painted models. And if my brain starts clicking where I feel nostalgic, and warm and fuzzy, and I go, oh, I want to rescue that. Kind of like a puppy you see running down the street. Then I'll purchase it. I'll start acquiring the correct sprues. The... Even when I build rescue projects, piles and stuff. I already have an actual prototype in mind, either photographs, videos, drawings. I never build a generic, except probably for this guy, but we're doing a restoration here. I, I usually, the fun of my hobby is the research. The fun to me of this hobby is building a one of, of an actual prototype. And here's some examples here while we wait for the paint to dry, so to speak. These were piles or just a hole and I acquired the different pieces to make them actual prototypes of the real thing. So let me give you a quick uh, run through of what I do. Um, this is actually going to be Michael Whitman's Cursed Tiger. Michael Whitman's Cursed Tiger and we're working off drawings and and videos and plans. Not plans. Yeah, sort of plans. Um, so... This is actually an Academy Tiger Tank hull, a Nidalary Tiger Tank turret, plus various other pieces. I like to use metal tracks for my spare tracks. I got Dragon track holders. Uh, I added the correct lights and the conduits and so on and so on and so on. Eventually, all my stuff ends up with metal tracks, but for right now, we're using these tracks here. I don't know what the brand is or manufacturer for those. Number two here. This one's kind of cool. I kind of like this guy here. This guy here is one of, I think they were nine. If you guys can correct me on that. I think they were nine Tiger Tanks, uh, initial Tiger Tanks that went to Stalingrad or Leningrad, if I recall correctly, back in 41, 42. And I'm not sure if they all made it back or they were destroyed and captured. But uh, they were planes, bare bones. This particular one we're modeling here doesn't have the you know, the the bustle rack back here, the storage bin, and she didn't have any tools or cables up on top on the deck, and they were painted gray or gray with white camouflage, and they think they belong to the five and the 503rd uh, Optilum, if I'm not mistaken. And this other one here, um, that's made from uh, dragon pieces. Uh, there might be a couple of other pieces from other manufacturers, but this one here would be Tiger 131. Uh, this was a wreck when I bought it. This is an early Tamiya offering, and we cut off a lot of the pieces. We added a lot of stuff, photo edge grills, uh, uh, the, the way that we had the correct light set up today. I'm modeling the way Tiger 131 looks at Bovington as we speak. And um, still have a lot more to go. Cleaned up a lot of the bad stuff. Added the front track spare holders and so on and so on and so on. And I believe that's an early, to me, a kit with a lot of mods. What I do is I primer everything eventually into me a gray or I give it combinations just to catch my eye. Sometimes I never paint them at all. So let's get back to why we're here. Got four more minutes before this thing cuts off. And it's good because it keeps my videos short and interesting. So. Do it like that. You start to get the idea. That's a sand casting. That's a one piece sand casting. Just people refer to them as casting, but they're casting because they're cast in a casting sand, a special sand that they use. And in these big giant forms. And that's why they're rough like that, believe it or not. Uh, I used to do casting, actually, by the way. Um, 
very familiar with the process so that's why I'm saying what I'm saying because I'm my exposure to it once upon a time many years ago pretty much we're done uh, I got one more interesting little surprise to show you guys uh, oh actually let me talk about this our track guards or walkways uh, what I decided is we're gonna use the original photo etch it's way too flimsy and thin and I wanted to replace it with one piece piece of brass which maybe I might still might do I have the correct equipment to make the bends and folds at that tiny scale that it would need or I can use the brand new photo etch put it together lay it down you know upside down in this case it would be upside down Lay it down upside down, do the correct bands and folds that it would require. And then get a piece of sheet brass, cut it to the correct width, and solder it to the underneath of the walkway. Doesn't have to be brass. I can use my, my uh, lacquer thinner steel gallon jug sides, cut that to the correct length, and solder it to the underneath to give the photo itch. I'll keep all that photo etch detail, but it'll be a little bit more rigid and it'll be all soldered together. And you have that lip that faces the viewer so you would never see it would cover what you did unless you flip the tank upside down like that. So we're gonna play with that. Might dedicate a whole video just to that alone, but I feel it's very important extremely important for these kits that have that walkway that sticks out that's made out of photo etch we've got to do one more minute here's a surprise i wanted to share with you guys that's why i'm putting the metal tracks on there i just love the way it looks uh, i'm a huge fan of metal tracks so you get the idea where we're going with this guy and how she's gonna look um it's not a full restoration. It's more of a cosmetic restoration. So she's going to look like a million bucks here in a couple of weeks. And I hope you guys join me on these quick little coffee uh, update episodes. And that's what I'm trying to keep them at. So I was going to film the process how I put those on, but we're running out of time. And just so you guys know, why do I prefer metal tracks on my armor anyways? Everyone's different. Just, just look at that sag. It's just the weight, the sag. In my mind, since I'm that weirdo who likes working with metal, <laughs> it's like if it was just custom made for me. And I got a huge smile on my face. You guys just can't see it. We're going to cut off here pretty second. The camera's going to shut off. You guys take care. Have an awesome weekend and have a blessed week. Thank you for following my humble channel. Uh, they look great. So any ideas, tips, criticisms, please comment below. Subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Just stop by and say hi. You guys take care.